Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Lecture 35 and we continue our discussion on stabilizing effects of filters. Uh, we can pick up any unstable method and we can actually uh, design a filter uh, in such a way that we have a stable method. The property of the filters is defined in terms of what we call as a transfer function which is uh, the quotient of the Fourier Laplace amplitude after and before filtering and this kind of implicit filter that we are applying here in an explicit manner alters the numerical amplification factor g by a convolution with the transfer function to give us uh, altered uh, numerical amplification factor upon filtering and we try to figure out what are the operational parameters in the physical plane itself and as an example we show how second order filters, central filters are designed. Uh, this requires satisfaction of a consistency condition and prescribing a transfer function at a particular value of k h, which happens to be at the Nyquist limit of k h equal to pi. <coughs> uh, subsequently, we discuss the properties of the various order central filters and uh, we do it by adopting a, once again a global analysis and uh, we notice that if we are to be uh, solving a non periodic problem we need to adopt uh, once again near boundary filters uh, uh, revert back to a higher order filter in the interior and as we go near the boundary we can keep on reducing uh, the order of the scheme and this is what is called as the least ordered central filters or LOC scheme. This is also again uh, given by the Guy Tonde and his colleagues, uh, we show how this can be effectively used. We also uh, talk about uh, the various filters that one uh, uses near the boundary. Uh, this one sided filters actually leads uh, to a complex transfer function and this uh, can lead to alteration of uh, dissipation and dispersion properties. This is what we discuss in detail that filter parameters uh, are important. But we also note that uh, we can um, play around with the frequency of filter. That means, how often we perform the filtering can determine the quality of the solution. But what is more important that at times uh, we notice that uh, in a multidimensional problem, uh, the filters applied in different direction works differently. And this directionality of filters in association with the physical nature of the problem can be a major source of error and this is what we discuss on this finally. So, let us uh, <coughs> start on uh, our discussion again uh, on filters. I suppose uh, you have also seen the assignment now. Now, you know what filters can do. Uh, your assignment tells you that uh, if you have an unstable method, you could uh, use a filter carefully and uh, make it uh, stable, right? So, that is uh, precisely what we are trying to do. So, suppose uh, the basic principle uh, uh, remains the same that if you have an evolution equation of this kind, uh, okay. So, what you are trying to do is uh, you have uh, some solution, let us say uh, depends on space and some time, uh, uh, let us say at T n and through this equation you actually arrive at uh, like this. Okay. So, we actually march in time uh, via some algorithm and using this equation uh, we arrive at the new time state. <coughs> 
it may so happen that uh, this process of uh, direct application of the method uh, on the differential equation may lead to numerical instability uh, like uh, your assignment uh, I have purposely suggested that uh, you take a method which is inherently unstable we know that we, uh, we usually would see that uh, if we go to the corresponding uh, k plane so this is your physical plane in the k plane what we would be looking at uh, is the u function for a wave number k and uh, this uh, would take you to the next time step and what we uh, define this uh, method was in terms of uh, the g the amplification factor which we called it as a function of k uh, as the quotient of uh, u of k evaluated at the advanced uh, time level uh, divided by the predecessor. So, this is uh, the definition and uh, your assignment uh, tells you that uh, we have purposely chosen a method which is uh, greater than 1. Right? So, this is your uh, condition for uh, numerical instability. So, for that k component uh, you are uh, noticing that uh, the method is unstable, right? If the method is unstable uh, for any k, then of course the overall method would not be workable. But then, uh, what we are saying that uh, we would like to use a filter, and uh, for the filter, we'll define what we defined uh, the day before was uh, a transfer function, right? We did uh, talk about a transfer function here uh, via use of some filters, which is uh, given there. <coughs> so, this transfer function, what is this transfer function? Uh, this uh, transfer function we would define uh, um, we will take uh, whatever we have. Uh, obtained uh, via the time integration. So, this is your uh, time integration step via the time integration step you have arrived at uh, u of k plus k at t n plus 1 and the filter takes that solution and uh, operates on that given by this. So, I will call this as ok. So, basically we are uh, using uh, an auxiliary function which we uh, call it the transfer function and uh, we have uh, noted uh, how that comes about is this uh, um, implicit equation. <coughs> Please note that uh, this equation is implicit and this is exactly like your uh, tridiagonal system that you would like to um, uh, use because of its ease of uh, operation, uh, but we will call this uh, filter as explicit. Why? Because we are getting the solution here and then we are explicitly applying a filter characterized by this transfer function. So, we are basically going to multiply the obtained numerical solution at the advanced time level with this transfer function to get a solution, filtered solution which is little more well behaved. That is the whole idea. More well behaved in the sense right now to begin with it is greater than 1, we would like to bring it to exactly equal to 1. That is essentially is your assignment. So, you, you, are, you, are, you are to take an unstable method you have to choose this uh, transfer function very carefully, so that you get a perfectly neutrally stable algorithm. Okay? So, that is uh, probably the best way of uh, understanding what filters uh, can do for you. So, basically um, what happens here uh, is that uh, this is the accepted solution, right? this is the raw solution upon the application of the numerical method. You take the raw solution convolve it with the transfer function to get a solution which will be acceptable that is your numerator. right? 
So, basically uh, then <coughs> uh, we can define g hat, g hat is uh, essentially the composite uh, gain function, okay, amplification factor. So, this is uh, a combination of then uh, we will we'll, uh, write it like this that uh, g hat will write it like this that this will be the accepted solution at the advanced time level uh, divided by the solution that you had started off before the integration. right? So, what uh, you can see that this we can uh, simply write it as u hat uh, k of uh, c n plus 1. Uh, divided by u at uh, k c n plus 1 uh, times now of course uh, you can see this quantity here that we have written here is uh, here the transfer function right so that is uh, what you are doing uh, times this. What is this? This is our original amplification factor, right. So, now you know what is to be done very easy that you have a g of k which is greater than 1 and you will multiply with a t f so that uh, this remains well behaved, right. For your problem, what has been given? You have been given a packet. So, the packet is uh, fixed at a single wave number, centered around a single wave number, right. That is what you have seen that k h basically defines the central wave number. So, all you, you need to do is find out for that value of k h, what is this quantity? You design this so that you get this g of hat g f or k equal to exactly 1, right. I thought I will explain to you what is uh, in a sense you are expected to do in your assignment and now the uh, main question that remains is how do you design that transfer function right how do we do that and that's what we discussed in the last class that we obtain the numerical solution those are uh, there on the left uh, right hand side and then you apply a filter of this kind okay <coughs> essential idea remains that uh, you end up solving a linear algebraic equation of this form with uh, a being again a simple tridiagonal uh, scalar matrix uh, and that is that, that is that. So, essentially then uh, we have uh, noted down that these operations are occurring in the physical plane and this uh, view that we are taking is in the spectral plane, right. So, we need to uh, work out what uh, and how these things are related. Uh, you notice that uh, you take the integrated solution and uh, go on to the right hand side and make this operations in sequence, right. You start with uh, a 0, then you will have a 1, a 2, etcetera all the way up to a of capital M and that capital M was defined as the order of the filter and on the left hand side you have this uh, coefficient alpha which uh, we call as the filter coefficient. Okay. <coughs> and uh, we actually identified the range of alpha to be between minus uh, half and plus half. Why? Because we wanted to make this A matrix diagonally dominant, so that we do not get into any numerical problem while uh, filtering via this uh, equation. <coughs> However, I will not uh, give you an answer offhand, but I would ask uh, you to show what happens when I choose the alpha equal to half plus half? You will see that uh, it will not filter anything. That means the transfer function for alpha f equal to half is 1, right. I, I think uh, it would be a good uh, exercise for you to prove it for any value of m. Uh, for uh, m equal to 1, that is what we have shown here is the central uh, second order filter. and uh, <clears throat> in your assignment, you can actually make use of second order filter. So, do not have to do anything fancy. We can do much more uh, uh, higher order, we can take higher order 
uh, filters, but we would restrict our attention to a second order filter. Okay? And you, you can see what does uh, this central mean. The central means that uh, the coefficients uh, on either side, they are symmetric right? about the diagonal. Uh, uh, on the left hand side, you have both uh, equal to alpha. On the right hand side, you have both uh, a, by, a 1 by 2. Okay? <coughs> and uh, what you uh, noticed here, that uh, Taylor series expansion gives you this kind of a, uh, expression on the left hand side and right hand side. And uh, we demanded that uh, consistency should uh, require that uh, uh, at the basic level, u j must be equal to u j hat. And that would mean the coefficient 1 plus 2 alpha must be equal to a 0 plus uh, a 1. Okay? <coughs> that was uh, what was uh, required at the basic minimum level and called, we called it as the consistency condition. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what we could do is uh, um, we have uh, three unknowns, alpha, a 0, a 1 and we wanted to keep uh, alpha as a kind of a free parameter. We do not wish to uh, a priori uh, um, fix the value of alpha, so that we are left with no control. We want to control the performance of the filter through the choice of at least one parameter, let that be that alpha. Okay? Uh, that means that we need to figure out a 0 and a 1 and this is one equation that uh, we can use for uh, evaluating those uh, couple of unknowns. The other one we decided that uh, the transfer function should be equal to uh, um, 0 at the Nyquist limit. Okay? And uh, how do you do it? Well, uh, we have uh, written down that equation that we uh, see it here. So, uh, this is basically that please do uh, understand that this is written in the physical plane, this should be a lower case. Uh, although the slide shows they are to be up, upper case, but this is what we are doing. So, this is uh, your uh, filter So, uh, you uh, use the um, spectral representation of this and then you can immediately see that this becomes 1 plus 2 alpha. Uh, yeah. So, this will uh, give us uh, cosine k h, because this will give e to the power plus i k h, this will give e to the power minus i k h, add it up, you will get 2 cos k h that uh, we need to do and uh, we would have u of k uh, e to the power i uh, k x j, that is what we are doing. Uh, this uh, should be equal to on this side, we will have uh, a 0 plus. If I up uh, again, I am going to get a 1 cos k h. Okay, and uh, that will be again u of k. So, this is the g k and uh, this uh, also would be evaluated at the same node and this is what we get. And uh, basically, uh, this is our u hat and this is u. So, you can see if it works for all k. So, we can uh, get rid of uh, this, equate the integrand and this since they are operating on the same node. So, we can uh, get rid of uh, common uh, part. So, this is what we expect and you can very clearly see the transfer function for this second order filter would be equal to u hat by u and that is equal to 1 plus uh, 2 alpha cos k h divided by <coughs> what we have uh, uh, a 0 plus a 1 cos k h. Okay. <clears throat> uh, one of the function uh, of uh, this filters uh, 
is to basically stabilize the computation. And by now, I think we all agree that most of the time uh, in numerical computation, the problems arise at the, the highest wave number, right? So, that is what uh, we decide uh, some qualitative feature of uh, the transfer function. That is what also uh, we need to keep in mind. So, we like to do that. And what we expect this transfer function should be uh, uh, of that nature, which will not uh, alter the solution at uh, low k. Okay? So, it should remain uh, flat equal to 1. And uh, what we would like it to do, it should uh, attenuate all the higher k h component and this is uh, what we uh, expect uh, to happen that the transfer function should be equal to 0 at k h equal to pi and uh, that is what uh, we are talking about. So, at uh, k h equal to pi, so this uh, will uh, basically tell you that uh, k h equal to pi uh, should be equal to oh, 1 minus 2 alpha I have done full tau. Okay. Okay. So that's what uh, I was myself getting surprised. So we uh, would get uh, then the numerator. We get uh, a zero minus a one and the denominator is uh, 1 minus 2 alpha and that also tells you why you do not want uh, alpha to be exactly equal to half. Uh, what happens if uh, alpha is exactly half? Uh, in addition, if I take alpha equal to half and demand the transfer function at k h equal to pi, it becomes indeterminate form, but you can work it out and show that that becomes 1, but that is just what I am telling you for a second order filter, but the thing that I asked you people to look at is that for any order filter you can show alpha f equal to half will give you transfer function equal to 1, if you, you should be able to do that. But then if I uh, want to do this equal to uh, this equal to 0, then of course uh, I require the numerator to be equal to 0, that gives you uh, a 0 should be equal to a 1, right. And uh, if a0 equal to a1, then uh, look at the previous uh, solution, I mean the equation here, if I put that equal to that and this is what we get, a0 equal to a1 should be equal to half uh, plus alpha. Okay? <clears throat> so, now you can actually uh, realize that in your assignment, what you need to do is basically find out, you know the value of k where your wave packet is and uh, next thing that you would like to do is figure out the value of alpha, where for that value of alpha, you should get, uh, so suppose this is my cage, uh, I, I choose some discretization number of points. I have not talked about how many points you should take, right? Uh, maybe you know you are choosing some point here. Hmm. You have chosen h in such a way for the wave packet that you are here. So, this value you know. So, if I know what this is, let us say this is 0 0.955 and then if I know this is 1.05 and if I multiply by 0 0.955, do I get 1? No. Then what I can do is, I can keep plotting this uh, transfer function for different values of alpha, right? And that is uh, distinctly possible for any order filter that you do and uh, this is a kind of a result that you are seeing here that uh, um, Look at uh, the solid line for a moment. We are focusing upon second order filter. Those are given by the solid lines, and these are the two values of the filter uh, transfer function for alpha equal to 0.2 and alpha equal to 0.4. Hmm? What you notice that uh, for smaller values of alpha, uh, transfer function uh, starts deviating from 1 earlier than what you get to see here. And what did I say that when you approach alpha equal to 0.5, what would you get? You will get this uh, solid line to go straight up to 1 and at the Nyquist limit it will just fall off to 
equal to 0, that is your uh, box filter, that is uh, what is uh, one associates with spectral method. We have talked about it, right? The discrete method, we keep on attenuating the solution smoothly, but when we adopt a spectral method, then there what we notice that uh, uh, it works like a box filter. So, you do not do a, any alteration for all possible cage and once you have up to the grid resolution, that is where it falls off. So, alpha uh, equal to uh, 0.5 would take you uh, along a line which will go straight all the way up to pi and then it falls to 0. But anyway, you are noticing that uh, your control in uh, solving the problem revolves around two things. One is choosing the value of appropriate alpha, the other thing is h, how many points you can take, you know. But given in your uh, assignment, I have uh, removed the second degree of freedom because I prescribed the value of kh. So, if you, you, do, you, we are, you are not given a value of k, you are actually given a value of k. Why did I do that? Because uh, we have noticed that uh, all our numerical properties depend on this non-dimensional k, right? That is the k h. So, that is what we have done. So, you, you, all you need to do in your exercise would be to choose appropriate value of alpha, so that the transfer function uh, multiplied by the unstable g of k, this uh, right hand side should give you exact value of what at the wave packet number. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, this uh, what we just now uh, talked about is for a second order filter. So, suppose uh, we want to uh, look at higher order filter, what do we do? Well, we keep uh, taking uh, more points, uh, more points on the right hand side, right. For example, if I want to add on an additional set of uh, term, I could do it like this. I would write it a 2 by 2 and then I write u uh, j plus 2 plus uh, u of j minus 2, right. Uh, so, what will uh, that uh, uh, do for us? It will do a couple of things for us. Uh, now, uh, keeping alpha still as the filter parameter. So, we are uh, going to choose it freely by on our own accord. Uh, that uh, leaves us with the task of uh, evaluating uh, three unknown coefficients a 0, a 1 and a 2, right. What will be the consistency condition here? Our left hand side will have still the same thing 1 plus 2 alpha what do we get here? A 0 plus right, is that ok? So, uh, this is a condition that you must satisfy. So, for this uh, we are uh, talking about a higher order, higher than second order filter. Now, talking about this order business, uh, I suppose you would all uh, realize that, uh, uh, you all realize uh, that uh, order comes from uh, this Taylor series expansion, right. Uh, in this exercise, we have just simply have done this. So, the next uh, level of terms which are uh, unbalanced are the second order, that is why we called it a second order filter. In the next level, what we should be doing actually, we would be equating the coefficient of the next set of terms. So, what should I get for the next set of terms? That should be the coefficient of uh, u double prime, right. If I look at that on the left hand side, I will get 2 alpha, right. And on the right hand side, what should I get? Uh, a 1, right, is not it, a 1 by uh, 2, right. And from a 2, I would get what? a 2 by 2 into 
to square, right? So that's uh, what you have to do. So for the next higher order filter, you would be actually uh, be satisfying this two equation, and then what remains to be done? Forcing the transfer function at the Nyquist limit equal to zero, that will give you the third equation, and then you'll be solving for those three equations to fix a0, a1, a2 in terms of alpha. Uh, in fact, uh, let me give you this uh, reference where uh, all these things are uh, given, all this uh, coefficients as a function of alpha is given. Okay, uh, this paper is by again the same group. They have uh, done most of the initial development. Okay, <clears throat> this is uh, in AIA journal. Okay. Uh, you can uh, take a look at this, where this uh, people have really worked out uh, sort of filters, and just to uh, uh, give you one, at least one more uh, set. So, will uh, the next order filter will be a fourth order filter? That's what we have uh, uh, been looking at here. This two equation plus the transfer function at uh, uh, pi equal to 0 would uh, give you a 0 as 5 by 8 plus 3 alpha by 4, a 1 would be equal to half uh, plus alpha and a 2 is minus 1 eighth uh, plus alpha by 4, right. <clears throat> so, we have uh, this uh, fourth order filter defined by this three coefficients in terms of alpha and uh, we have actually also seen the fourth order filter behavior. And uh, you notice that the coupling of the terms on the left hand side and on the right hand side uh, ensures that the order of the filter always uh, increases by 2 by adding one set of extra term on the right hand side, right. That is what we have done here. The moment we have added this A2 term, we have gone from second to fourth order, right. And those are the coefficients that you get. And uh, well, um, let me just uh, fill you with this information and I will not uh, uh, give you the rest. You can take a look at the original source material. And then we should have the additional uh, coefficient a 3 and 
that was solved to this. Yes, is there any question? Any observation, any anything that you would like to share? Tell us. No? Not related to anything of this kind. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, so if I uh, basically uh, look at this, this is the generic equation that we are talking about uh, in the tridiagonal framework, but we can actually make it even more general by looking at expressions of this kind. Huh? I, as I told you, we write it like uh, a times uh, u, u hat is equal to b times u, that is the nature. So, that actually works out uh, an expression of this kind and uh, uh, we have uh, written it out in the k plane, right. We have written it out in the k plane, so that uh, you can get uh, this. What, what is special about this compared to this what we have been looking at? What is the difference? The difference is the previously what we are doing, we are doing a kind of a local analysis looking at the jth node only. Huh? And whereas, here what we have done, we have been able to integrate the whole domain together and uh, obtain the transfer function on a node by node basis, right. We can get the all the uh, transfer functions for different uh, jth node by an expression of this kind. So, whatever we have done if we can write it down for the full domain, right, we will write it down for the full domain uh, in the following manner. So, we will not uh, write it like this. So, what we are saying is we are uh, writing this A times uh, u j matrix should be equal to B times uh, Uh, this vector u j. <clears throat> now, as you can see that uh, what uh, we could do is we this is an implicit equation. Suppose, I am looking at say the jth node, let us uh, call it a different uh, running variable u l. So, if I am looking at the jth node, I would be looking at uh, the jth line entry of the A matrix multiplied by all the u hat l's and that should be equated on the jth line entry on this side. So, that uh, basically would give you uh, j 1 u 1 plus uh, let us say a j 2 u 2 etcetera etcetera and let us say we have uh, uh, total n number of points in the domain. So, we will be writing a j n u n. So, that is your uh, left hand side and on the right hand side we will have uh, similarly b g j 1. Now, this is uh, u 1 and so on and so forth. Now, what we did, what we uh, originally did for the analysis of all compact scheme, the same thing we do. Right? We can refer everything back to our uh, representation uh, in the k plane. So, what we could do is these are sort of constant coefficients. So, they, they could remain as it is and this I could write it as uh, say u of uh, k uh, e to the power i k x 1 v k. So, that is this term and then I could write e a j 2 and this we are writing u hat and we will write uh, u hat of k uh, e to the power i k x 2 d k and so on so forth equal to uh, the same thing we can do it on this side. Uh, well, you can keep the b j 1 outside and you will get uh, u of k and e to the power i k x 1 g k and so on so forth. So, what I uh, try to do is I, ca I we try to use here the same idea of projecting this phase into the jth node phase. So, what we would be doing then just simply write uh, the same thing we will write u hat of k and this I will write it as uh, 
x1 minus ik xj uh, times e to the power ik xj dk. So, that is uh, what we are going to talk about. So, we have a term of this kind here. Well, let us uh, and from here also we can write down a uh, similar thing. We will uh, write uh, u hat of k uh, e to the power i k x 2 minus i k x j and then e to the power i k x j d k. So, we can write uh, uh, all the quantities in terms of uh, the jth uh, node phase. Okay? And then of course, uh, you notice this is what you are going to get. right? On the left hand side, you will get a j l e to the power i k uh, x l minus x j and then this is u hat let us say uh, evaluated at t n, that is what you are going to get sum it over all possible l's, right? that is what we have done here. Uh, the same way you are doing it on the right hand side. So, now since you have uh, obtained this expression for the jth node uh, in mind, so the corresponding uh, ratio of uh, uh, u hat uh, by u should be the transfer function t if I call it uh, t of k, but now it is uh, specifically done for the jth node. right? So, what happens is um, you notice that uh, whatever the filter formula that you choose, eventually you will have to write out a complete set of equations. And if you have noticed for your second order filter, we uh, did write it like this. So, uh, <clears throat> you can see that uh, we can start using this expression from j equal to 2 all the way up to n minus 1. Hmm? One thing we must uh, also realize that uh, in many of the physical problems, uh, well in all physical problems you would require boundary conditions. That means what? At j equal to 1 and j equal to n conditions would be given to you either in terms of the functional form or in terms of the derivatives. right? So, you can do that. So, if you look at that, then there is a need for applying this formula from j equal to 2 to n minus 1 only. So, when I am trying to use a second order filter like what we have written out there, uh, we need to apply it from j equal to 2 to n minus 1 only. So, we can clearly write this equation right, without any problem, because we can use the same stencil for all the interior points. There is not any uh, ambiguity there. However, however, what happens is if you want to uh, be a little more ambitious in terms of uh, higher order and uh, would like to go to let us say fourth order filter, then what would you do? Well, uh, as we have written, we would be then adding this next pair of terms, right? That would be this a 2 by 2, and then we will write u j plus 2, and this will be u j minus 2. Hmm? Now, you can see that uh, this equation, whether you are doing a second order filter, a fourth or sixth, any order filter, what you do. The left hand side always remains the tri diagonal thing, because we do not want to uh, increase our computational overhead. The left hand side remains the same, it is only the right hand side points, those are used in filtering, if increasing with the increasing order of the filter. So, in the fourth order filter, we need to take j plus 2 and j minus 2, but then we have to now think of the following. That, uh, we can apply this from j equal to 3 to n minus 2 only. 
what happens to j equal to 2 and n minus 1? We cannot use this expression. We have to do something more. And doing something more means the left hand side would be just the same. So, all we are looking at basically uh, asking for, for j equal to 2, what should we be doing? The left hand side will keep it uh, as it is, because that does not cause any problem. On the right hand side, of course, uh, you have to uh, be concerned about what you could do. One possibility is you revert back to second order filter. Hmm? So, then uh, you have uh, no problem. So, basically, then what we are saying that we are applying a fourth order filter from 3 to n minus 2 at j equal to 2 and j equal to n minus 1, we are going back to second order filter. And then once again, we have no ambiguity. And what is it called uh, Yogesh? Lowest order compact, is it? People have uh, all kinds of mouth filling names for it. So, this is uh, what is called as least ordered huh? LOC filter, this is what they call. So, you keep on uh, having always everywhere the central uh, stencil. Why uh, are we so particular about central stencil? I think any one of you would be able to tell me. If I do not have a centered stencil, what all other options I can have? I can have a one sided one. Hmm? If I use a one sided filter, what will happen? You have seen the Taylor series expansion for the second order filter. We had always second derivative, fourth derivative and so on and so forth. The moment we do a sort of a one sided filter, we are going to get also those odd terms. And what those odd terms would do? Would do apart from adding uh, dissipation, it can add to first derivative. If it is a first derivative, what do we call this sir? That is convection, right? that is our convection equation. We always have seen del u del x is a convection term, but if I have a third derivative, fifth derivative, we call that as dispersion term. So, basically a convection term is a special case of a dispersion term, but in actual parlance, we always will uh, call the first derivative as a convection term and that would uh, do what? Well, you can understand what, what happened, what uh, we have seen, uh, g of hat uh, uh, was, let us put it as j, now we also know how to do it for the full domain analysis. and. Uh, we could write like this, that would be g of uh, the original numerical method times this. So, if I take central filter, T is real for central filter, right. So, it is real for central filter, whereas uh, this becomes complex for if I call them as one sided filter, that is what it is. For one sided filter, T of j becomes this. Now, if you recall for all those error analysis that we have done, we have seen g itself can be complex and it is uh, real and imaginary path fixes the phase shift and that helped us in finding out that c of n, remember the numerical phase speed. So, suppose you have struggled to get some uh, good combination of k h and n c to get a correct uh, value of g j of k, 
but somehow uh, it becomes slightly unstable. Then you are trying to use this filter to bring it down to its uh, neutral case. But then if this is becoming complex, it is actually puts you in a dilemma, because your original g of j is correct, but now that you are trying to add a complex transfer function that will shift the phase relationship of g imaginary and g real. So, you know that there, there might there would be a, some sort of a conflict and it is for that reason that we always try to avoid using one sided filter and this uh, LOC filters are one way of uh, getting around. Okay? getting around. Uh, however, we will talk about uh, time permitting uh, that uh, sometimes we may actually intentionally design upwind filters for better properties. So, that uh, if we have time we will get, get there. Okay, so, what happens is uh, now you can take a look at this figures and uh, you have uh, in front of you the transfer function for second, fourth and sixth order filters okay? and they are shown here. Say so, for a fixed value of alpha as the order of filter increases, you have uh, lesser filtering at low k, hmm? whereas the descent is rather rapid at high k h. Right? So, the sixth is the, the uh, this hollow circles, so that is what you are seeing that it does not uh, alter the original amplification factor may be all the way up to 1, but then it starts dropping off. Whereas, uh, the fourth order filter this may start happening at 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and the second order filter it may start happening from 0.3 itself. Right? So, you can see that is where the order of the filter comes into picture. However, when uh, there is another way of uh, altering the filter property is uh, by increasing the value of alpha, I mean changing the value of alpha and what you are noticing here, the increase in value to 0.4 actually uh, improves, well depends on what you mean by improvement. Here we are talking about improvement in terms of not interfering with the original numerical method. It only uh, should uh, interfere at high k h, so in that sense alpha equal to 0.4 would be considered an improvement over alpha equal to 0.2. So, this is uh, what we could do. And now, uh, there are ways of, uh, as I told you, uh, to not adopt central filter, but have upwind filter. And uh, people have suggested, this paper itself uh, suggests a host of them. Uh, unfortunately, though, they uh, did not do the full domain analysis, right? They did not do the full domain analysis, and that is why they have uh, had no clue of uh, what is happening uh, for the uh, filter in the full domain. And uh, because we uh, uh, have the wherewithal to really uh, analyze, and that is what we have done. We have uh, shown you here the transfer function, the real and imaginary part. Uh, with uh, one sided filter and uh, you notice that uh, j equal to 1 and n we do not alter the function right? because of the boundary condition we do not want to alter. So, that is why we have just uh, shown here an imaginary line at uh, 1. So, that is what happens that means at 1 and n we do not interfere, but at 2 and n plus 1 what happens? Uh, we see some kind of a overshoot. So, what happens is, uh, your desire is to reduce the amplitude at high k h, but uh, for j equal to 2 and n, you can see there is an intermediate range over which instead of attenuating the function, this transfer function actually amplifies it. Right? Now, another thing that I did not talk about is that this is a post processing operation. right? we are doing numerical calculation after every time step we can use a filter. So, option remains with us, we can also not 
use a filter after every time step. So, the frequency of filtering is also an additional degree of freedom in your armory to actually control the quality of solution. So, uh, what we are noticing that if we do filtering at every time step, uh, then you would notice that at j equal to 2 and j equal to n minus 1, this filter can actually amplify. So, if your original intention is to make an unstable method stable, you are noticing that at j equal to 2 and j equal to n minus 1, you are not getting that. So, got to remember that and the imaginary part of course, will tell you what is happening. Uh, this will actually bring in the first derivative and uh, this kind of operation attenuation is due to the even derivative and this kind of values that you are seeing in this lower uh, frame uh, causes instability, right. We do not want them to be there. So, what happens is basically then, if we try to use some of this uh, filter, uh, boundary filter as suggested in this uh, paper, then we notice that uh, for j equal to 2 and j equal to 3, we actually end up having numerical instability as opposed to what was our initial intention to stabilize the computation. It actually uh, destabilizes uh, near the boundary, whereas of course, on the other side, you have the complementary phenomena, it actually uh, attenuates uh, much more severely. So, uh, basically I am not going to go much more deeper into it, just to uh, tell you, uh, huh, this is that LOC approach, hmm. that what we wrote there, least ordered centered uh, filter operation that uh, one can do. So, basically this is the way that we uh, have plotted this figure that at j equal to 2 and n plus 1, we have used a second order filter, at j equal to 3 and n minus 2, we use a fourth order filter and rest of the points, we have uh, uniformly used a sixth order filter and the corresponding centered uh, filter behave like this. Well, this is much better than using one sided filter, right, we do not have to worry about numerical instability. You may lose uh, some bit of accuracy at lower k h near the near boundary points, but uh, by and large it uh, looks uh, pretty decent. Okay? And of course, you have additional control over alpha equal to 0.2. Okay. 